Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Rochelle and this is episode three of Chai Time with Rochelle. And I know it's challenging uh, for me. I intend to start giving most of my attention to the video I am recording for this because this will be a replay as well. Um, ah, even right now as I'm, I can feel like the, who there's so much of this energy of wanting to control so much and it's going around and it's so amplified right now and I can feel this even in this moment as I'm just starting this going oh I didn't quite say things right or I should have said this or I should have done that and then we get attached to this whole idea that we can change what's already happened while simultaneously changing what's about to happen and we end up being in this whole ego space thing of of attachment to something that we have no power over. That said, my name is Rochelle Richard. If you are new here, and if I have not mentioned that yet today, and this is the Chai Time with Rochelle show, wherein, yes, grab my fresh cup of tea as I have yet to have a sip this morning. Mm. Mm. So goddesses, this is where we are. In this space of really having the amplification of that which we do not have power over currently underway in our experience here. Cheers. <laughs> Mm. Yum. So let's chat about that, shall we? Since that's kind of organically come to be my little line for the show here, let's chat about that, shall we? Divine timing. We talked in the last episode about attachment, period, attachment to labels, attachment to things. And a label is a thing. So we have the label and then we have the actual thing. So there's the, the breakdown of those two. And, and, and then we get to the, the attachment to time because there was, there's so much to which the ego is attached and can become attached and therefore must become detached from that there's no way we could ever cover it in one hour, one week, probably one lifetime for real. Okay, for real. That's how this goes. All right. And so... That's what I wanted to talk about today on today's show is the attachment to time and the need to control time, what is unfolding in our lives. I want to share this morning, like literally, you know, 50 minutes before the show was supposed to start, I uh, was putting on my sorry blouse here and this was, this is my favorite, sorry. This is my favorite one of all that I own. This is the one that I love the most, even though I love all of them. This is the one I love the most because this one was special, is special. It was specially made. And that's because, and I'm probably thought as, as some, you know, entitled American. However, I was able to order this blouse with the zipper so that I, because I'm flexible, I have long arms, long limbs, so I can reach and zip and unzip this blouse. I knew I couldn't do any hooks or anything and I had the option to choose a zipper. And they did all of the work, sent it to me and they sent it with hooks. And I've shared this whole story on a video uh, on my YouTube channel. But point being that I was adamant that no, not only will I not pay for this, I'm, I'm not happy. I ordered this. I, I can't, I literally, I, I can't. I can't wear the blouse that has the hooks. I, I have it somewhere. It's just sitting somewhere. I physically can't wear it. Anyway, I digress. I can't put it on. So this morning I'm getting ready and I almost didn't wear a sari. I was feeling in that space of again, processing through things in my own life, feeling um, 
as things are just kind of crumbling and tumbling and falling apart as the up level is coming out of this, right? That's what happens when so much of our lives feel like they're just falling away, falling apart, uh, as though the rug has been yanked out from beneath us. And yes, you know, admittedly, I have my ego has been ooh, having a heyday with that kind of nonsense. So there is an undercurrent of anxiety that my ego wants to, you know, perpetrate and perpetuate. Like right now at the beginning of the show, like now I'm cool. I'm cool. Like there is none. But at the beginning of the show already, right? That oh, oh, mm. So before the show, I'm putting this on and the zipper gets stuck in the fabric. And I'm working and, and of course I'm sore. I'm sore from doing my workout. And I'm reaching and trying to unzip and zip and fix my zipper. And I'm starting to freak out and go, oh my God, I'm going to be late for the show. And oh my gosh, it's the end of the world. And I'm watching as I'm watching as this part of myself wants to start to freak the fuck out and start to go, oh my God, I need to control, 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 control. Knowing very well, that's what that is. And so I had looked in the mirror and I went, well, it doesn't look bad. I'll just show up, you know, half zipped. No one will know, you know, it's zipped in the back. However, and this, I did reach out to some friends, a friend, my neighbor, uh, to, and she wasn't, she didn't answer. She, come to find out she wasn't home at the moment, but I digress. I said, well, I'll just put on my, my, my sorry and wrap and everything will be fine. No one would know. But I was determined to have, because I would have felt <gasps> discombobulated and off had that stayed in that space. And it's a wonderful lesson. There's a, I'm getting to this and, and, and how it correlates to divine timing is that in that moment, my ego wanted to freak out, wanted to make this big, huge mountain out of this molehill where sure there was a temporary solution. I would, yes, be able to put it on and do my show right here in my own home. That's my home for the next two and a half weeks, I think is left. And, um, and it would be fine. And then at the, you know, 30 minutes to an hour mark, the show is over. And then I could go and find some other assistance to fix this. Instead, I'm like, no, it'll be okay. I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm knowing, I'm knowing what's going on, even though I can't see it. And so I go in there and I'm, I'm working it and I'm working it and I figure it out with patience. Okay. With patience and surrendering acceptance that if I don't figure it out, if I can't get it all the way up, then I have a temporary solution. It's okay. Everything is fine. So I had accepted the outcome of not getting it fixed. And that accepting is what created the allowing for that energy, for that, that block to be released and for my to get that zipper all the way up on the back here. And so how perfect, of course, that that comes right before the very show about surrendering to divine timing. You see goddesses, whoo, do we like to, and <laughs> not immune. Okay, not, I'm, I'm human here too, human here too that um, we have very much this tendency that if it's not right now, then it's never, it's never mind. It's never, it's never gonna happen. Just forget it. And especially on this twin flame journey, Who's, who's done this in that space where it is the, um, if I can't be with my twin flame now, then, or it's the, if 
we can't be together now, we'll never be together, and it's the end of the world. Whatever perspective, whatever way you're viewing this at this time, that's still attachment. When there is an ultimatum, my ego has been very much in this space as I'm healing a very, very deep mother wound uh, about the whole asking what I want only to completely dismiss it and give me something completely different. And even though right now it feels like that in my life with uh, not being able to have the other things that I had wanted for, you know, from leaving this house, right? My next chapter in life that instead, oh, it's just going to be another house. Probably I'm, <laughs> it's been challenging to work through that because my ego wanted once, once, still once, because all of this is being amplified right now as we're all, you know, any, any of that deeper remaining, uh, a attachment to an old way of being, an old story, an old narrative, an old belief, that is being amplified right now in a big way. And again, these mother wounds, especially, we are healing those. We're healing all of that right now. And as I sit here, I'm like, my my even my own ego is just like, <gasps> nobody's watching. And it is mind boggling when I know that 95% of you are going to catch the replay anyway. Yet the ego, again, with that need for control. And that is what divine timing, that's the lesson. That's one of the greatest, biggest lessons of divine timing. It's letting go of control of something that you don't have control over. Divine timing, what is it? Divine timing is an oof in that moment. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to turn off the show. Wow. Divine timing is when everything is perfectly aligned. That's what it is. It means that the time is right in this moment, that all things are aligned such that they may meet, connect, come together. That is how manifestations work is you and that which you desire are finally in that same place together. That's what divine timing is. It's when everything is aligned. And we're not really allowing for divine timing. We're not surrendering to divine timing when we're so focused on controlling everything. We're not actually then focusing on where we do have power, where our power can only be found. And that's inside ourselves in the releasing that control, that need, not control, but the, the illusion of control, therefore the need for control of something that you don't have control over. And that is the when something is gonna happen. It's just like how it's gonna happen. It's none ya, none ya motherfucking business. What do you want and why do you want it? And yeah, so maybe <laughs> things don't go in the order as you would like to, them to go in your life. So say you had plans for to be somewhere else, especially after these last two years of nonsense we've all been in, right? We all had lives that we've all been asked to, in a lot of ways, to put on hold for nonsense. When we're all gonna die, but it's a 
You have to choose to live. You have to, you have to claim that. You have to say, you know what? I'm not going to wait. And I'm not going to sit and be miserable in my own life just because, just because it doesn't look exactly how I want it to look right now. Just because right now, for right now, things are not in alignment for the highest good of all, for the most peak, for the best experience that you could have. And that's why things don't happen when they're supposed to happen. And even as this is coming right now, I'm needing to hear this message. And perhaps that's why, that is why I am the one watching this right now, watching myself on this screen. Because I admit, goddesses, these last two years, and especially these last six months have been challenging to say the least. And you will always hear me say that a challenge is an opportunity for growth because it is. And so I know that all of this has been for us to grow, to grow more and more into who we are, who we truly are. And that means that things that don't resonate with you, things that are from your old version of self, they'll have to fall away. Your stories, your narratives, maybe even certain relationships and circumstances. Maybe that's just what needs to happen. Because remember, your new life will always cost you your old life, whatever new life it is. That divine timing, in order to get aligned with what you are asking for, to be in that space of divine timing, to be aligned with it, to step into it, to be ready for it. As Abraham says, to get ready, to be ready, to be ready, to be ready, we have to be raising our vibrations. No matter what challenges the universe throws our way, our experience, whatever comes our way, it is up to us to choose how we respond. And I am here taking my own accountability for all of you today and saying, boy, it has been so fucking challenging with this house thing and having had other things that I had, plans that I had of what I wanted to do from this house. I wanted to be in this house until these options. Hello, goddess. I wanted to be here, you know, because I, I, I spent a week painting this room, y'all. You know, this, this has a piece of me here. And my ego then wants to be like, well, if it's not this, this, or this, the reason for all of this is because of healing that mother wound, projecting on to the universe as I was taught through religion that God is this abusive parent that is constantly, you know, keep, you know, taking things away from you because you're bad all the time. Toot toot goes the train horn. And that for me, that mother wound is so amplified. It ha has been so amplified starting with last fall was when it really came to light. That whole, oh my goodness, my mother would ask me what I wanted only to, on the flip side, completely dismiss it and do it her way. My voice didn't matter. And because of how law of attraction, how divine timing, how all of these things work, how the universe works, my ego, because of the mommy, the mommy issues, we'll say <laughs> lovingly, mommy issues, right? It 
it's that space of going, oh, wow, being amplified to show that my ego had, which it, it's had because of how I was raised in the Catholic Church, again, about the universe, God, being this, this ultimate parent. So I grew up projecting, as I was taught, onto a, a, a deity, all these human attributes, right? And so, oh my God, it's a parent. So the universe is punishing me, right? Or the universe in acting the way my mother was would ask me what I want only to then say, but you can't have that. Oh, and you can't have that either. Oh no, no, no. You know what? What? what how would you like your room done? Oh, okay, that's, that's good, cool, sure. And then weeks later, oh my God, I'm so excited, I got your room done. And then nothing, nothing like what I had wanted. And that is the feeling like your voice doesn't matter, right? Which that's amplifying that Rochelle needs to be using her voice more which, you know, that's what we've been healing here is that persecution wound, which that's what keeps us from speaking our truth and on all levels. Is being afraid to just use our voice. We're afraid that what we say doesn't matter anyway. And that all of, all of this deeper stuff has been happening lately without you know, without my ego really allowing for that awareness that I do know, of course I know, that all of this is happening for us. All of this, that until you get to that divine timing intersection, shall we call it, right? Where, where finally the things cross, right? You guys, you, it meets your desire, your desired manifestation, and you, you guys are finally right here. And there you are right? You're on the same level. You're perfectly aligned. That's, that's divine timing is this meeting, right? But when we are not, right? We, we're over here. <laughs> I was like, based on my, my little image, here, when we are not allowing ourselves to let go of our stories and the control, the control of each and every fucking step of our journey and what it's got to look like, then we are the ones that keep ourselves out of alignment with receiving what we want. And so my, my, my inner child lately has been in that whole temper tantrum of um, being super impatient to go to the, to, uh, the circus, shall we say. Um, I'm a little warm. I'm like, whew, I did not turn my fan on. If I'm going to remind myself, I got a little warm in my... Oh, I love this so much. Love this. By the way, IndianWeddingSari.com. That's who I got these from. They were amazing. They did, obviously, get my zipper. They were phenomenal. They were just fucking... They're awesome. And I'm order. I'm going to order more. I'm ordering more. Anyway. Releasing this need to control is the very thing that removes that which is blocking what we want to come in. But we have to be the ones to let go because it's like, it's like we have created this very narrow for something to come through. Right? When we control things, we say things have to be within this structure, this construct, and nothing outside of it is going to do. Well, guess what, sister? What you want, it's outside of that. So here you are wanting something, but you're saying that you're not able to have it because you're not willing to let go of what you need to let go of. And that in turn then to surrender to this divine timing, 
to pivot to where your power is, what you're creating, the work you're doing inside yourself, what state of being you're in, being able to go, ooh, 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 I am, ooh, I'm in a lot of resistance. Being able to accept that responsibility for that. And then in turn, be willing to be the one to, I trust, I surrender, I say yes. The very statement, the very mantra that came from my trip to meet my twin flame love in India. Because that was wild to fly around the world. This is bugging me down here. To fly around the world. I never even, I never even owned a passport. You want to talk about divine timing. But at the same time, I chose the date. I did manifest a specific date for meeting my twin flame in India. I am going to tell you right now, sisters, it was not easy. The amount of work that I had to do to up level, to step into allowing for that to happen. <sighs> Let's just say I almost canceled that trip and I almost threw away $1,600 in a plane ticket, which I, I didn't know any better back then. I had just Googled and bought my first. So I just, I'm like, oh my, I'm doing it. I bought my plane ticket, goddesses, before I ever even had my passport. This is why I sit and tell you for absolute certainty that what divine timing is, is when everything is energetically aligned. The day I bought my airline ticket, I was not energetically aligned for stepping foot in India. But I, I got there. I, every, every time I was asked to step a little bit further, allow for more expansion, more expansion, allow for more to come in, more to, to unfold, more magic, more support from the universe, more guidance, more trust, more surrender to say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm doing this. And I've, I've set a date. I bought the ticket, but what if my, what if my passport doesn't come in time? What if this, what, what if that? I had to go through this incredible experience of having booked my plane ticket for a specific date, even though there was very much a, a soul connection with that date. It's uh, January 14th is a, a date of transition for one of my FELV uh, kittens that I used to have, that I will always have, my baby loves. Um, and so I did have a soul connection, a soul bond with that specific date. However, that again was not easy goddesses i didn't own a passport i did not have my indian visa i had nothing and i had never been off the north american continent in my life never and i'm going to meet this young man who i had just met in this life in person online just a few months prior and let me tell you all i put in my Indian visa application only for it to come back rejected at first. It didn't even make it, thank God, to the, the was it the consulate, the embassy, the Indian in, in consulate? I think it's Indian consulate. Didn't even make it to their offices. Grateful I went through a third party. They reviewed everything and said, ah, oh, no, uh-uh. You're missing things, okay? You're missing things. Hello, goddesses. And so, of course, that... My ego, ooh, ooh. Now this is coming from someone, goddesses, who used to have anxiety so severe she couldn't leave her house. So if anybody knows how to transmute anxiety, okay? But during all of that time, that's what I had to do. Surrender, let go. Because even though I had the date, even though that was there, Things could have completely changed. 
But what did I do? I did the work. I did the work. But that's just it, goddesses. You see, you can have a, 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 a timeline. You can have a goal in mind of a certain date that, yes, that resonates with you and everything in your knowing says that is it. However, in order for that true divine timing to be in that alignment space, you have to make sure you're stepping into that. And this is for whatever we desire. This is what truly creates this divine timing is the, the universe is always ready for us. It's that, are you going to rise to the occasion? Are you going to let go of the heavy shit that you're trying to hold on to, trying to control, to allow yourself to float up, to rise up, to ascend up to the higher frequencies so that you are aligned with receiving what you want to receive. And I'm telling you, goddesses, I had to put down a lot of shit, a lot of stories I had to give up. I had to transmute. I had to reframe. I had to rewrite in order to get to India then. And now it's the same. It's always the same, goddesses. It's always the same. The universe is, it's not prejudiced. It doesn't, there's no judgment in it. It, it, it is. It responds to what we put out. And that divine timing, which is, again, whatever the frequency is of what you desire, you have to get into that and you have to maintain that. That has to become your baseline. Because if something's up here, it's not going to come down here. And that's what we've got to really learn for ourselves. And that's why I say about releasing control over what you don't have power over and recognizing and getting control over what you do. And that is you. That's always been you. But we've been taught this ego perspective of controlling things outside of ourselves. Like you can't say what you want to say because you're going to hurt my feelings. Nope. You can say whatever the fuck you want because you have no power over my feelings. Okay. Okay. That's what empowerment is truly about is you being in control of you that no matter what happens outside of you, you maintain you because otherwise it is giving power away to that which is outside of you. And when we attempt attempt to control all the facets of our experience, when something's going to happen in what order and, and what it exactly looks like, but not, not actually being willing to just let go and focus on what you need to actually be doing to get yourself into that energetic vibration that aligns you with your manifestation. Instead, we get all but hurt. And I say we because, oh, again, these last six months, I have been, woo, a lot of deeper healing for myself. A lot. And I know it's been the same for my clients, for my audience. There have been so many out of you out there who have reached out to me and have said, oh, my goodness. And and, and Chai Time with Rochelle is, a, is my new show, but I've been around here for a minute, okay? But have reached out to me. Just in the space of going, oh my goodness, why does this feel so big right now? It's because you are shining brighter. You are, are energetically lighter. You're, in, you're a higher vibration, even if you don't quite realize you are. You have been letting go of things, which means those things that you're still holding on to, that you still have an attachment to, those things are still weighing you down and they're going to be huge amplified in that sense because you've let go of so many other things you've you've you know lifted you've gotten lighter but yet you still have this heavy shit so when you allow yourself to go ooh mm, i'm still holding on to that Okay, do we want to let that go? Are we ready to be done really truly and step into this next version of self and truly surrender because this is where we are right now. The divine feminines, you are all in this space of being asked, 
Are you ready to step into your next version of self fully and completely? No more one foot in the old, one foot in the new. There is no more liminal space. The void space where you, we have to close the gap. That's where your work is. Not in attempting to control what's happening outside of you, but in you closing that energetic, energetic gap within yourself and going, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Shit's going crazy. And I'm freaking out. And even, and again, there's the, because of the anxiety in my past, there is an undercurrent. The ego is just, just itching. Itching to release the, uh, the levers on the dam of anxiety underneath me here from back then. And I'm like, no, we, homie, don't play that no more. You know, I can't believe that I used to not be able to leave my house. I just can't. Just like I used to be a pack a day smoker. I used to be a pimped out drug addicted prostitute. You know, we really, again, we, we like to look at things and go, really how we judge so quickly it's because we quickly judge ourselves and that judgment is something that weighs you down that puts those blocks in your path so we're still this week you know we're still not this week but the first the episode two and and this episode we've been talking about that detachment letting go of the things that are not yours to carry. They're not yours anymore. You may have thought they were. Beliefs, ideas that, oh my gosh, time is running out, nonsense like that. Anything that takes you out of the present moment. Anything that tricks you into acquiescing your power so that you're not here in this present moment. Thoughts, beliefs, fear. When you are in fear, you are in your mind. And when you are in fear, you're definitely not surrendering. You're trying to control things that you can't control. And that's why we have anxiety. It's why we experience that fear because it's something beyond our control. But when we can come back to that which we truly are and realize that, mm, but I'm a soul being. I don't need to be afraid. I don't need to have fear. I don't need to worry that time is running out for me because it's not. There is no such thing as time. And so this which is divine timing is when it's aligned. Period. When it's aligned. So... Where is your power in all of this? In surrendering to divine timing? Practicing. And I'm going to point this out because it's a practice. The thoughts and beliefs and the habits that you have now, you have been practicing. Maybe not on purpose, but you have been. And that's why they're habits. So to develop new habits, you have to practice them. First, you have to become aware. You have to become aware that you are attempting to control things that you don't have control over, that you see, you see this hand, that grip right there? Nothing can come in that, nothing. There is no room. But when you let go of your need to control what you cannot control, then you have an open hand for the universe to give you. so much amazing and all the amazing that you deserve and desire comes your presence practices there's so much that simply practicing presence one of my favorites, sitting and having a cup of tea. And when you're present, you are in your senses. You're here. You can, you can hear. Do you hear? And you can smell.
Mm. You can taste. Mm. Do that, goddess. Do that. You can look, of course. Go sit out on the porch and watch the wind blow the trees. Flowers wave in the breeze. Smell, taste, listen, hear. Because then you will truly hear what's in here. And that's going to be that you have nothing to worry about. That everything is divine and everything is working out. It was 1111 11 on the ticker, just as I said. Ele everything is working out. And anytime you think it's not, goddess, that's when you're being asked to come into the present and spend time with yourself. Realize that all I gotta do is get out of my way. Open the fist. <laughs> Let go of the grip, the death grip that I have on trying to control and try. I'm very conscience, conscious about when I use that word because try is an escape hatch for the ego. But trying, that's the point then, trying to control something that you can't, because you can't. So instead, it's learning to control that which you can. And that's to just let go. Let go of what you can't control, because in here is what you can. And that's it. Because in here is what is putting what's out here. And that in turn is what is bringing what's in here, that whole divine, it's all connected. It's all connected. So again, in order to get to this divine timing with your divine masculine or whatever manifestation that you desire, it's all in here. It's all in here. That resistance, that weight that you're carrying and allow for the unfolding of the hand, the expansion, and the allowing for yourself to receive what is coming your way. With that, Goddess, I would like to share with you that this is actually one of the days as well in my 17-day Self-Love Empowerment Challenge. We talk about divine timing. We, of course, talk about detachment in general, just as I am discussing today. We could talk about so much on detachment, couldn't we? But with that, we do have things to, other things to do. Some of us gotta go, you know, house hunting. Start to clarify what it is I'm really looking for and what's going on. And where my power truly is. So with that, again, you can sign up for the 17 Days Self-Love Empowerment Challenge. This is just technically day two of the challenge, it would be. And I have accountability activities. There are journal prompts for you. There is an additional video that I do have that I had originally made about divine timing that is linked in that email. As well, throughout that challenge of 17 days, you will find and experience so many opportunities to shift, to expand, to release this resistance that's inside of you, to let go of the things that you cannot control and be getting control over that which you can. 
you. This 17 day challenge is solely focused as with everything that I am about you reclaiming your power on this journey because it's your life goddess nobody else is going to live it for you and you have come to live the fullest life that you could possibly live and that means to stop putting yourself in limitations as well saying oh i don't have to oh it'll never oh did, uh, two teardrops in a bucket fuck it okay some of the best things i learned in college it was good for me after all anyway that said goddesses i am truly grateful for each and every one of you those who caught any bit of the live and those of course who are catching the replay i appreciate you so much and oh by the way that 17 day challenge because i wanted to encourage that accountability for you i did again as i mentioned create accountability activities there's challenge activities for each day of the challenge and there are accountability activities and the accountability activities are actually the activities that you do as well to earn entries in a perpetual giveaway that i am doing yes so those details are in the emails I do have several giveaway gifts that are a part of it. We are going to be talking about one of those on Thursday. And at this point in time, I have on my schedule my first official guest who will actually be joining me here in the studio. Studio. I love using all these big words. It's in my, my creative space. But yes, this is the recording studio. This is where all the magic happens here. And so I will be having my first guest on Thursday. Um, it is part of what the giveaway is as well. And um, yeah, that said, of course, I will let you know, one of the big giveaways, the very first thing was a 30 minute session with me. A video session, mind you. Okay. And we look at where you are. We get clear on how to move you from where you are, get you unstuck and moving forward to where you want to be. No matter where you are looking for and finding power goddesses, no matter where you are. I mean, that's just a gift and that's what I do. And I'm here to teach you how to do that too, so that you can be continuing to move forward in your life. And no matter what the fuck comes your way, you're ready for it. All right. You recognize that mm, I can't control this. What is this teaching me, all right? Me, what's happening in me for this, all right? So with that, we'll dive more into all of that, of course, in a one-on-one -on -one session, which you can book at iamempowered.as.me if you would like to go ahead and get on the bandwagon now uh, because the giveaway drawing will not be, it's quarterly, so the next drawing will not be until the first week of June, April, May, June, July, the first week of July. Okay, and so it comes quarterly. And again, we're gonna go over all the giveaway gifts that are gonna be available through all this time. And whew, I believe that's it. Oh my goodness, I didn't even, like usually see, usually I use my little little list, but I this time, again, I just knew today it was just more of that intuitive flow space. So with that, goddesses, again, I am here for you. My inbox has an open heart policy and I will also, of course, be putting the link to sign up for the 17 day self love empowerment challenge in the description of the videos. And just so you know, you can access, access that at empowermentexperiences.com. That is my links page right there on the landing page where you can just click and be taken straight to and sign up. It is started with my confirmation checklist. So you will get the twin flame confirmation checklist first followed by the 17 day self love empowerment challenge because dear sweet goddess i assure you if you're looking for that confirmation as to whether or not he is or isn't your twin flame then i promise you oh yes and you might as well get a jump start on it i promise you you are looking for everything else that's going to come in those emails to follow i'm sure of it that's why i was led to create them that's why the checklist got combined with the challenge because 
One is as though the divine masculine, one is as though it's the divine feminine. Coming together. Both are necessary. Both are important. Both are vital to this journey, to this experience. With that, goddesses, thank you again so much for joining me today. And I will see you back here on the next episode of Chai Time with Rochelle, which is live streamed every Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. Arizona time, which is currently Pacific time. And the replay videos are uploaded and published every subsequent morning. And that would be Wednesday and Friday morning on YouTube only. That is where they are searchable. That's where there's a playlist here on uh, Instagram and Facebook. It's not so streamlined. Um, so if, when you're ready to catch the replay, it will be on Instagram and Facebook. I've decided to just leave them, but they get lost in the feed very quickly. YouTube, these videos will be available for you to be searching and of course referencing on the playlist that is specifically created for Chai Time with Rochelle. And with that, I thank you so much for joining me today. Be sure to grab your cup of chai, tea, chai, whichever word you desire, and uh, join me next Tuesday morning, 10 a.m. Arizona time. And for those who may be on the other side of the world, um, well, make sure it's a cup of like chamomile or lavender tea for bedtime, okay? And join me. I will see you then Thursday, because it's Tuesday. I had to remind myself it's Tuesday. So I will see you in two days, goddesses, right back here on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, live streaming the Chai Time with Rochelle show. Thank you so much. And I will see you all then. Until then, remember, as always, I am here to remind you that the power, power to detach, the power to rise into your power. It's in your hands because that power has always been inside you. Namaste.